Hello everyone, welcome back. So this one we've got another example. We're gonna be calculating the moment, um, but as you can probably guess, given the form right here, it's gonna be the vector cross product we're using. If you get three dimensional, it's usually better to just go to the vector cross product. Um, unless it just looks three dimensional and they're both in the same plane actually. If that happens, um, not very rare, not very often. So with that in mind, how are we gonna do this? Well, we got a lot to do here. First off, we have to get one floor spectrum. We have to have the result in the moment. We can't just have a moment from the first, one moment from the second. You can do that. You could then add them together. But the easiest thing to do is going to be to add these moments together. So I add these forces together and then calculate the moment. And finally, determine the moment right here. Um, be very careful of the order. R cross F, not F cross R. Um, and that is entirely because counterclockwise is considered positive. Um, and so you have to have a set way of doing it. The number will be the same. Um, the magnitude will be the same. It just will be either negative or positive, depending on which way you spin it. F cross R will give you a negative sign versus what R cross F would have been. OK, so you got this. Pause, go try it on your own, and then come back and we'll walk through it together to see if you, um, you did it right. OK, so one, two, three, and you're back. So. Let's try it out, see how it went. First things first, we just add the two vectors together. It's plain addition, it shouldn't go too hard. I components together, J components together, and finally the K components together. Make sure you put them all with like. And be very careful about your sign, that's one of the biggest mistakes I'm seeing currently in the class, is just minus signs. Then we make a position vector, which luckily for us is more or less a given in the problem. If we go back, we see that the X y and z components are all given and so we're done x is the i component y is the j component and z is the k component so then we calculate our moment we take in the vector formulation this time so we just write it down um, you can possibly just write all this down it's usually good to have a formula. Use the method even as you get good at it because you don't want to make mistakes. If you're really good at using your um, calculator, make a little program to do it. I'm good with that. But you should probably do it by hand to start. Make sure you understand how to do this so that if you have to do something crazier, like let's say a four by four, you can figure out how to do that. Okay, so looking at this, we have R on top, we have F on the bottom position over the force. And then we start walking down the line. I'm going to have to clear my screen a little bit. One second. There we go. Um, and so first we cover I and we do J cross K. And you see that right here, 5 times 175 minus 3 times 130. Then we cover J um, and we do I cross K and K cross I. So we get 4 times 175 minus 3 times negative 100. But since we're doing I cross K, it's the wrong order, and therefore it's a negative sign in front. Then finally we do the last one, which is going to be covering up K and doing I cross J. That'll be 4 times 130, and negative 100 times 5, and we subtract those two. Then we add all this together, and we have our moment. And this is the vector form of our moment. If we wanted to, we could also take the magnitude of this. Oh, went a little bit too far. So with that, we are done. Um, make sure you master this, okay? Um, the cross product is a fundamental skill, which you will use not only in this class, but in Calculus 3. So get good at it. Well, I hope this helped you. And I'll see you all next time as we go through a couple more examples. Bye-bye.